Welcome to Common Sense Choices, and I'm Linda Tupin. <laughs> well, this is our 10th time together, and if you've just accidentally stumbled on us for the very first time, welcome. Pull up a chair and join the party. This is our journey that we're all going on together. It's a great place that I get to hang out with you, and I get to know you by your comments in the comment section, so don't be shy because I want to get to know each and every one of you. And you hang out with me and you know we eventually become like the people that we hang around so I'm excited to get to know you each and every one of you better well thank you for clicking play you will make 35,000 choices today and that's those small accumulation of those what may seem insignificant choices add up to a direction that your life actually ends up going and at the end of our life it defines us. So thank you for choosing to click play. God has gifted each and every one of you 168 hours this week. That's 10,800 minutes. And you chose to give me some of those minutes. And I take that very seriously. And I'm honored and privileged that you have done that. Well, Obviously, you guys, we are here to make a positive difference in sometimes what seems like a little bit of a dark world, but I hope that this will encourage you, lift you, and challenge you. Some of you are listening on Apple and Spotify. That means you're probably driving, so hands on the wheel, nine and two, and enjoy the journey. For those of you watching on YouTube or live streaming in my Facebook group, grab a notebook. All right, I've already filled up one entire section with just the classes that we have done in the first nine episodes. So this will be a life course. So I'm giving you my life lessons over time and putting you in front of the people that have shaped my life and made such a positive difference. But you guys, the very best way to ensure that you never miss an episode, all right, I don't know about y'all, but I need somebody to like take control of my mind and just tell me where I'm supposed to be at any given day. Well, we can kind of do that for you. So our episodes are released every Thursday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The easiest way to get them is just to go to, and we're going to put it up on the screen right now, lindatupin.com. This is how it looks on your laptop. You'll go up to the right-hand corner to the sign-in button and just give me your information. That would be your text and your email and click OK. But that's a big but. We will immediately send you an email and you have to go looking for the email because it's a two-step security system. And that email simply says, are you sure <laughs> you want to follow Linda Tupin? <laughs> and I hope you say yes. And anyway, then by the magic of the internet, you will get each and every episode emailed to you every week. So please do that. All right. Well, the way that you get your name in the drawing, who doesn't like free stuff? And I have lots of stuff over at lindajupin.com. Click on the button that says stuff I didn't know I needed. And you will find my mantra over there on coffee cups, hoodies, t-shirts, as you can see in the background on the seven foot, seven foot piece of art behind me. It is the foundation for this podcast. So say it with me. I am where I am by the choices I've made or I've allowed others to make for me. It's all about personal responsibility. If we're gonna make a big difference in this big old world of ours, we have to accept responsibility for our own life and uh, in our own direction. And so over there at that store, you can literally put that mantra in front of your face. You'll see today that almost all of my guest speakers have their own coffee cup, uh, but the nice little ice storm stopped a few of them from getting them on time. So just look out for that. Well, just to recap real quickly, December, we uh, in our first four episodes, we dealt with mental health. January, we dealt with physical health. And now in March, uh, February and March, we're diving deep into what does it take? What does it take to run a business, a successful business? from your home. So let's put the word success in front of in-home business. You know, during COVID, people came home to work out of necessity and millions of them figured out they liked working from home, but it was a challenge, okay? And many of them decided, hey, I think I could run a business from my home. I could do this, but there's a learning curve to it. So in this two month window, I'm gonna put you in front of all kinds of people who have mastered it. And we're going to begin to dissect everything that it takes to run an in-home business. We started out um, February with my good friend, Cindy Williams, and she talked to you about you needed an attitude of being a victor instead of a victim. 
All right. That's just good old common sense. You're not going to be able to call your shots in life and run a business if you think you're a victim. So be sure and catch her episode. It will inspire you to a level 11. All right. But today we're going to get down to the nitty gritty. I am excited to bring on the screen with me right now, five of my very best friends. And all of them are going to come on the screen together and we will get to know them. Hang on second. Um, we have, I figured out guys, I figured out that we have accumulated, all of us have accumulated 227 years of running a company from home, all of us together. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. Well, as you can see on our screen right here, first of all, from Oxford, Mississippi, would you please wave Miss Kathy Brummett? Also from, is it Lakeland, Florida now, Bet? I always forget where you live, Bet Vernon. And all the way from Lubbock, Texas, Jan Fedford. And from Charlotte, North Carolina, Robin Rowland. And from Bowling Green, Kentucky, please welcome back to our podcast for her second appearance, Pamela Shaw. <laughs> all right, well, Kathy, we're going to bring you on the screen first. And... Kathy, let's talk about, hang on just a second. Let's talk about, let's talk about why people need multiple streams of income. Okay, lots of people will say, oh, I, I would love to work from home. I'd like to have a business from my home, um, but I have another job or I have another career, but we live in a very different world now and we need that multiple stream of income. And before we get started, I want just to tell my viewers that Kathy has, has uh, ran a business from her home for 32 years. And she came from both an entrepreneurial and a traditional background. Her father was a dairy farmer. Her mom worked in a bank and a government office, but later they started their own catfish farm. You're the only person I know, Kathy, that started their own catfish farm, or your parents did, and your own restaurant. So you know all about multiple streams of income. So what do my viewers today need to know about running a business and why they need a second or third income? All right. Well, thanks, Linda. I'm excited about being here today with um, some very special friends and excited to have this time. And, you know, it is true that today more and more people are looking for some extra streams of income so that they can decrease debt and so that they can increase income. And one of the best ways to accomplish both of those things is just to create more streams of income. So let me share kind of how that would work. One of the most obvious ways is to get a second job. In fact, getting a second job is one of the top five things in Dave Ramsey's list of ways to get out of debt and to create wealth. And there are certainly plenty of available jobs right now. Everywhere you go, there are signs advertising help wanted. In fact, the place that, that many of our listeners actually go to work every day Many of those places have signs up advertising for help. And so why not consider asking for an extra shift at the place you already work? It's also a really good time to think about starting your own side gig and getting it going while you're working a full-time job. It's been very interesting to me how many people got really creative during COVID and started some real service businesses for example, in our area, the yard sign business exploded during COVID when people had to stay at home and get really creative with ways to celebrate special occasions. What do you enjoy doing? How could you create a business that people would pay for you to do that for them? I have granddaughters who are nine and 12 years old. And last summer, they advertised in their neighborhood that they would like to have jobs feeding people's pets when they were out of town. And they immediately got calls and jobs, nine and 12 years old, finding something that they loved to do, loved animals. I think about the family, and yes, family, that cleans my car. It's a husband, a wife, and children, and they come to my house to clean my car. 
And then there's the guy who comes to my house twice a year to wash my windows. There's so many service jobs that people are willing to pay for, jobs that allow you to work your own hours, set your own schedule, be your own boss. People will pay to have their gutters cleaned out or to have their Christmas lights hung or any number of things. I watched a really good friend start a business during the holidays making charcuterie boards for parties and gatherings. He made a ton of money just during December. The second stream of income that comes to my mind is investments. Let your money make money. I don't think there's anything more fun than watching your money make money. But saving is not easy, and there is never a convenient time to start. Start as small as you have to, but get started. And once you see how quickly money can make money, you'll find that you're willing to give up some things that you really considered necessities in order to save that money. I don't know what your guilty pleasure is. Well, I might know what yours is, Linda, but the listeners, I don't know what your guilty pleasure might be, but we all have at least one guilty pleasure. And how much money could we save in one month if we gave it up? Or what if instead of it becoming just a daily guilty pleasure, it became a weekly treat? How much money could you save? It really is exciting when you see that money start to make money instead of just appearing, just disappearing. The third way I think to get an extra stream of income is the one that I really want to focus on most, and I think it's the one that's most often ignored, and that is taking your current job and getting more from it, and that might simply mean volunteering at your current job to work more hours or more shifts. When you work for someone else, you also want to do everything in your power to make yourself more valuable to your employer. And it really seems today that the world is just more interested in doing only what they absolutely have to do and not one tiny bit more. Become that and then some employee. Treat your boss's business like you would if it were your own business and do more than you're asked to do. That will always open the door for you to get more hours, to get higher pay raises, to get bigger promotions. But then what if you don't work for somebody else? What if you work for yourself? How can you have more streams of income? Well, let me give you a few examples. Let's say you own your own plumbing or electrical business or any construction business. Where do you put the majority of your time? If your focus has been on new construction, then why not put a team in place to handle service calls or put a team in place to do remodels? Or if you do residential only, why not add businesses? Or if you do businesses only, add residential. If you have any construction skills at all, you can stay busier than you could ever want to just by taking small jobs that busy contractors never have time for. My husband did this for about five years and there were always people calling who wanted a new deck or a new bookcase or a new closet. He always had a waiting list of people who wanted work done. Or maybe you're a cosmetologist. Do you just cut color and style? Why not get some extra training and learn to do weaves and extensions and threading and nails and maybe specialty glamour for proms and weddings and special occasions. But what if you're in sales? Let's talk a little bit about how you can get more streams of income if you're in sales. How good are you at building new customers? How good are you at maintaining customers for life? What about getting customers using more of the products you sell? How many different product lines do you have and how many of your customers use products from every one of those lines? Is there a way you could maximize holidays and gift buying with your products? Can you increase your customer base by adding customers according to their age or their needs? Think about this. There is today a plethora of direct sales businesses. And I bet you can find one that sells a product that interests you. Join a reputable direct sales company for another stream of income. It's so easy to build a business when you love the product and then you can use your extra time in the evenings or on the weekends to build that business and make a little extra money. 
We all saw direct sales businesses thrive during COVID when they learned that they could reach even more people with Zoom parties. I know within the first two weeks of the shutdown, I was on four different direct sales Zoom parties. They really got it figured out when they realized they could, it could be in front of so many more people. You know, most of the time we can increase our income by just adding a few extra streams. And I'm guessing anyone listening today could come up with some different ways to do that by just sitting down quietly with a few minutes with a pad and pen and just let the ideas flow. Consult a friend who knows you well. Ask what they think you'd be good doing. But as you think about this, I want you to keep two things in mind. First of all, you don't necessarily have to do this second job forever, but you may need to do it for a short amount of time if you want to decrease some debt and increase some income. And then second, always remember, we can change our standard of living when we decrease spending and debt and we create more streams of income. So that's my thought, Linda. Girl, this could be a college class just on, on the five points that you made. <laughs> Holy cow, you cover it all. I was sitting there thinking, man, oh man, every person I know that has come to my house to do work just needed to hear what you had to say. Mm -hmm. Kathy, clearly we want you back on my podcast. <laughs> awesome, <laughs> so, I'd love to come back. <laughs> and put, put me on your schedule and... Uh, and thank you for your, I mean, 32 years of wisdom that you just gave everybody. But it wasn't just wis wisdom about our topic today. It was wisdom about life, okay? <laughs> you know, how we run a business from our home is how we run our life mm -hmm. and vice versa. So one has, to, one has to improve the other. So thank you, my friend, and you will be back for my audience. <laughs> All right, well, next up on our, um, I, feel like, I feel like I could television announce it. Next, after this commercial, we will bring on the screen my good friend who happens to live in a place right now that it's 80 some degrees while it's below zero out there. You can see the snow outside uh, all the way from Lakeland, Florida, newly married. What is it with all these newly married people I keep bringing on my show? She's just so happy. It makes us all sick. But anyway, would you please welcome to the screen my good friend, Bet Vernon. <laughs> oh, thank you, Linda. You know, I've been privileged to know you for decades, and you've always been a brilliant and dedicated leader, just always helping the masses be successful. And as you brought one very highly successful career to a close, you just jumped right back in, finding a new way of equipping and supporting countless others in all different areas of life. So congratulations, girl, on, on this new venture. I've listened to every podcast. I have pages of notes and um, you're doing so much for so many and I just um, am so proud of you. Uh, a huge uh, benefit to starting my own home-based business was being blessed to associate and learn from and do life with phenomenal women like you and the rest of the women on this screen and my life is just so much richer and emotionally, physically, financially, spiritually um, because of all of you and, and I will be forever grateful for that. Well, I also want to congratulate your listeners um, who might already own their own business and might be thinking about owning their own home-based business. And I just want to tell you, I think you're very smart and very courageous. Um, if that's the case, I think it's really important to make a conscious decision about will you get what you want from your business or will you just take what you get? Will you treat it as a business or will you treat it as a hobby? You know, a business is a venture where you, you expect income and a better life for you and your family. A hobby, by definition, is just an activity done uh, for one's leisure time and for pleasure. Uh, a business hopefully makes you money. A hobby generally costs you money. Uh, a business requires goals and a schedule and discipline and grit, like Cindy talked about. And uh, in a hobby, you can just do whenever you feel like it. Um, a business can dramatically change your future um, for you, for your family, possibly for countless other people. Um, but a hobby you can just walk away from any time and it really doesn't affect anybody else. I was blessed to have grown up on a farm. 
Well, and I'll I was, was going to I was going to tell everyone, you know, this is our kindred spirit here. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, several years ago, I I was out west and actually got to go to you know you all you saw the farm. <laughs> I saw the farm, like this massive farm where you grew up in South Dakota, and that's right. the farmer. Your mom like supported the the, the in home business you know, uh, the way farmers have to, and you've brought 37 years of your own in-home business. Plus you said you taught piano and <laughs> voice. I said, you yeah, know, I did that in home too for another 13 years. So, um, have your worked entire a lot. life has been running a business from your home. <laughs> it has, it has, but you know, I, I working from home, I, I learned from my dad. Um, it's, it, we don't, count the hours that we work. It's not how many hours do I have to work? It's how many hours do I get to work? And um, nobody told my dad to get up and go out before dawn and to work until after dark or to um, work when he didn't feel well or to um, work uh, when it was way below zero or above a hundred, you know, it just, uh, we did what we had to do. And so he did all of those things to make a better life for his family. And because he had no desire to work for someone else. And I know that punching a, a, a clock could be easier, maybe, but like my dad, I just wanted to decide when I wanted to work, take my vacations, who I wanted to work with huge and how much money I wanted to make. And I know that some are obsessed with that guaranteed paycheck. But to me, that's just guaranteed low pay. So uh, while I was teaching vocal music at, at the high school level, I had two babies in 16 years, in 16 months. <laughs> and I knew things had to change. So I quit that job and I took a part-time position at a local um, Christian university teaching boys. And I had more flexibility, but still was tied to a schedule with very little income to show for it. So the fourth year that I was there, I launched my own business and the girls were three and four. And I was still teaching two 10 hour days a week. So my time was very, very limited. But I found that if, if I were going to make the business work, first, I, had, I, I needed to have a schedule and a plan. And I had to work that plan. And I didn't just use a date book. I used a weekly plan sheet where I put out my hour by hour desired schedule and, um, and made sure that the work time on that schedule only had IPAs, income producing activities on there so that I would be focused on what counted. And then, um, you know, I know some people think I'll do as much as I can whenever I can, sounds good, but it really doesn't work. And, uh, but it was, I have to tell you after seven years of being retired from my business, I'm still filling out a weekly plan sheet every single week. <laughs> I just can't. Uh, otherwise, I'm just not happy with my week. Anyway, secondly, I needed a separate workspace. Kitchen table is not really a good plan. I actually started my business in the laundry room. I had to wash sheets before I could work. Um, but I built a really nice home with a great office with the money that I made with that business. Uh, you need to get help. And I, I knew I needed to get help with the girls, with the house and with the business. And that's a whole nother topic that I could spend a whole lot of time on, but just uh, take it, you know, get help. I worked while the girls were in preschool. Uh, I had very little limited time. And then I would close the door to my office and I would actually change clothes before they came home so that I could be mom. And I really thought it was important to compartmentalize because I didn't want to be thinking about my business when I was with my girls. And I didn't want to be thinking, feeling guilty when I was, um, in the office thinking about the girls. So I, I think allowing yourself to feel guilty can seriously sabotage your business. And um, I think women have a much bigger challenge with that than men do. Uh, there were a couple of turning points in my life early on. One was the day I took my girls to school and I came home with just a couple of hours to work and my business on the phone when I saw my friends Sandy and Sylvia walking up my sidewalk. And before I started my business, we often went to coffee while the kids were in school. And I knew I had to make a quick choice. Do I just open the door and say, come on in and, and let's have coffee? Or do I tell them that today is a work day? And um, I chose the latter. And I saw them look confused and, and sort of, um, I don't know, disappointed or... And maybe they thought what I had going was just a hobby and they didn't understand how important it was. I knew if I had said, today's a teaching day, I have to be at the university in 30 minutes, they would have been fine with that. But they couldn't understand why I couldn't just make those phone calls later 
but I knew I didn't have later. I only had a limited time to do that. So um, it's really important um, to, I think, to really stick to your guns and, and, and work it that way. But the, um, the other turning point that I had was um, I often told people that I taught at the university and I had this little side business going. And when I learned to say, oh, I own my own business and I teach part-time at the university, everything changed because I really believe that your husband, your wife, your kids, uh, other family members and friends will never respect or support your business unless you do. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> your, your belief and your enthusiasm and your passion are contagious. And so to all of you who are working your own business or would like to work your own business um, from home, I hope you will hear all of the things that we share today with you. And I wish you enormous success. God bless you. And thank you, Linda, for letting me share. Well, bet. Holy cow. I mean, you're exactly right. Delegation, getting help. Uh, But the thing I think I love the most about what you said is nobody's going to respect your business until you respect your business. And just that shift that you made, uh, instead of making an excuse like, I've got to go do this, it was like, no, this is what I do and it's my priority. And you guys, for my friends and followers, this is your first introduction to Bet, but Bet's going to be on again to talk to you about a special organization. I'd like for you just to take about 30 seconds to a minute just to tell them a little bit about the organization that you're heavily involved in right now that they're going to be very interested in knowing more about. Oh, well, uh, it started about two, three years ago. Um, For all you grandmothers out there, uh, potential grandmothers, uh, and those who have grandmothers or uh, have kids, it it just, it it hits so many areas, but it is a grandparenting, it's the, uh, a grandparenting organization called Legacy Coalition. And um, it's all about teaching grandparents how to be more intentional about their grandchildren's spiritual growth. And I know that so many people are great grandparents, but um, we're missing opportunities then. And just by um, this organization has done so much to equip and uh, encourage. And there's just so many ideas that I've learned that I know I'm a better grandparent and just leaving a legacy of, of faith for your grandchildren, which is so important. So I'd love, I can't wait to share about that. I can't wait for you to share about it because I know, you know, cause you're my friend and all of us on here saw when you first got involved and how excited and, and you have become such a leader in that organization and helping churches start this group in their churches and the world needs another bright, shiny light. That's for sure. And that's a great, that's a great place. Holy cow. So we can't wait to have you back, Bet. Thank you so very, very much. Thank you, Linda. All right. Next on our screen is my friend all the way from Lubbock, Texas, who has 41 years in running her own business. Uh, She grew up in a family where her father was an entrepreneur. He had started his own air conditioning, heating, and plumbing company that grew into a multi-state or uh, business. And clearly, she grew up in a home where her dad took some an idea and ran with it but we love her because she's just the dullest most docile person on earth and she never causes any waves to happen would you please welcome to the screen my friend Jan Bedford oh my goodness oh my goodness what a pleasure it is to be a part of this podcast um not only with you I echo what Kathy and Ben have said Linda just so proud of you and excited to watch this grow but and I think it's a privilege to be your 10th episode because that's always a that's always a benchmark right 10 and um to be able to just uh listen and I'm being reminded even just having her listening to you and Kathy and Bet so far and then Robin and Pam after me, why I love you all and why we sat at each other's feet for years and what we learned from each other. And so I, I'm going to piggyback a little bit on what Bet said about the value of taking what you do in your home business seriously. You know, I, um, I embraced a thought that I heard years ago. I started my in-home business when I was 23 and my husband and I had been married 41 years and we had only been married about six months at that time. And so I didn't really know what I was doing. I just was miserable in what I went to college to do. And so all of a sudden I thought, well, 
you know, anything looks better than what I'm doing right now. And so um, when I started uh, my in-home business at that time, I had no, I had no desire for it to be, I had no plans for it to be big time, but something just attracted me to it. And I think like you have said earlier in your opening, there's a lot of different things you can do from your home. But if I embraced a point, I embraced a thought that really served me well is that, you know, this business is going to be a way to make a life not just a living. And that whole philosophy, because we, I still live where I was raised and we are highly invested in our community and it's important to us. We are highly invested in our church and it's important to us. My husband's in sports radio, we're huge sports fans. And um, so, you know, I just, I could see more, yes, that I could make money and I could see that, oh, maybe I'll grow a little personally. But what I really saw my um, home owned business is it's a way to be able to design my day in a way that would allow me the opportunity to do these other things. And I quickly learned, and you will may even remember the day we talked about this, Linda, years ago, is that, you know, there's three things that will keep us from being successful in a home owned business, lack of attitude management, lack of money management, and lack of time management. Well, just so happens that all of those topics are going to be discussed today. And so I won't go into any of that in detail, but I just realized that, and what was really cool for me is, and for all of us that have in-home businesses, I think is that you can learn who you are and, you know, you take that same skill set and you put it somewhere else that's important to you. And I can really share with you now having two young adult children and for everyone watching this podcast, I believe I'm a better wife, mother, sister, friend, neighbor, volunteer, because of just the things I learned that I had to learn to be able to be successful in a home on business. And, um, you know, here, here are three things that I think, you know, the listeners probably could, could um, resonate with a little bit today and just kind of chew on. And that is that there's got to be boundaries. Okay, so here we are, we have this home owned business. And, you know, so do I clean out every closet in my house today and every drawer? <laughs> or the other end of that is do I work? you know, 24 hours a day, and I'm never present with my family. And so I realized early on too, that the boundaries were important, because I was not a stay at home mom, I was a work from home mom. And there is a difference there. However, because I was working from home, I could, I could set up my day in any way that I wanted. And so you know, there were seasons where we had little children, little babies, and then everybody went to school. And then, you know, I was, then we went to carting everybody around 24 seven, and then they started driving and we had high school and then we had high school tournaments. And then, you know, now they're both married and doing their own thing, but we just, a a stay at home business or stay at home mom couldn't design that, but a work from home mom could design her work around the different seasons of her life. And so to me, that was something that really was beneficial. And um, for people who are who are starting out right now, Linda, that could be listening to your podcast. I mean, it's worth it. it it's worth it, man. You know, and there's some hard knocks, but you have, to, you have to do that. Your loved ones, Bet said this, they will take your business as serious as you do. So, you know, if the first little speed bump that comes along in your business derails you, then, you know, and you just say, well, forget it, then I'm just not going to do it. Then they'll, they'll try to derail you. Because, you know, I remember many times where I, I had to say, guys, you know, I got, I have a work commitment tonight. And they were like, well, I thought that was, I thought that you're just working from home. Oh, yes, but I'm working from home in a business that I take very seriously. And so it was fun. And here's, that's a whole nother conversation for another day too. How did I decide what was important and what was not important? You know, how did I determine I would I would miss this event for the family and do and do a work thing or I would miss a work thing and do that event? And that's that falls under the umbrella of just your priorities and ages and all that stuff, stuff, stuff that comes along. But, you know, what I quickly learned, too, with all of this, Linda, is that hope is not a strategy. Hope is a wonderful thing to have as a Christ follower and hope for the future gives us the ability, you know, gives us power right now. I've always said, you know, hope for the future gives us power in the present. And so I can't say that I didn't initiate that, but 
you know, that, um, that someday I'll get that done and hope, you know, I hope this works. I mean, there were just some real strategic things that I, that I did as we worked from home. One of which was now let's be real clear. I started my business with landlines, man, those big old tel- those telephones that had those huge cords, you know, that I could go from one of the room and be doing something else, cooking and disciplining and doing whatever. But, you know, technology has changed a lot and things have changed a lot. But one of the main things I, I learned very early and I'm, I had to have some help learning, but I'm so thankful I did is just to be able to turn it off, you know, to literally in my mind, whether I was working like Bet said from the laundry room or the kitchen table or, you know, my bedroom for years and years, I just literally walked out of the room and closed the door and became present in the moment because for me, and I believe I speak for all of us, yourself included, none of no success is worth your family not being proud of you and not having a relationship with that. So those are just some of the things that, you know, and I can wrap my little part up by saying growth to be, you know, success is hard. And I think the world would tell us, oh, it's so easy. You set your own hours, you do your own thing. But, you know, it's a little bit more challenging because we're breaking habits that take us out of our comfort zone that we need to do to grow, whether it, you know, have whatever, we're having, whether it be learn the product, show the products, you know, reach out, whatever we're doing. So I think um, because sometimes it seems hard in that thing, but here again, it's a place where it's always, always worth it. And um, I think that's a good place for me to stop today. Oh, well, boundaries is a huge topic. It's a topic all by itself. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, because I think I saw that in so many television programs and and newspapers after COVID hit, you know, everybody had to go home and learn Mm -hmm. to Zoom. And, you know, I remember so many times, Jan, in my career where women, you know, would tell their husband, hey, I'm going to work for home. And then he thought that that two-year-old would, that she didn't need any help with the two-year-old in order to run that in-home business. And, you know, you had to explain to him like, well, why don't you take the two-year-old to work with you then if it doesn't really make a difference? Yeah. And, and it's just understanding boundaries. It's understanding structure and discipline. And as Bet said, a weekly plan sheet, those are all things that we we had to do we had to be our own boss is what we had to do so jan hope is not a strategy that is exactly <laughs> but and you know linda if i could say too, guilt the guilt you know learning the skill and all of this is learned all of this can be learned of like okay i'm on the floor reading to the children putting puzzles together being in the moment not feeling like i need to be doing something else right. whereas some nights i might be calling or reaching out and doing work efforts you know and feeling like that's where that's where we needed to be so Everybody can design their own boundaries. That's the cool thing based on what you're doing and what kind of money you want to make and what you're doing, but they have to be there. Boundaries of some sort have to be there. They can be yours, but if not, it'll just all become a mush pot and it won't work. Well, it won't work. Mm-hmm. <laughs> all right. No. Well, thank you, my friend, Jan. <laughs> all right. Well, our, our uh, next uh, expert, 42 years of running her own business, hails from Charlotte, North Carolina. Her dad was an electrical contractor and a contractor and ran some various other streams of income, which we will not talk about on this screen. Anyway, <laughs> my friend Robin Rowland. Robin, I talked about you in episode number four, my Christmas episode uh, called Hope and Healing, how I got through COVID without being mad at the world and every government official. But anyway, and it was tied to a book series that I found in your home. And you can see the books behind her. She has rooms full of books and she is an amazing cook. And all of us on here are trying to convince Robin that she needs a cooking show and that we'll all support it. And we'll all send people to watch your cooking show. How are you in North Carolina today, Robin? Um, I'm doing absolutely wonderful, Linda. Thank you for having me here this afternoon. Our weather is very, very rainy, and we're getting ready to have like a 40-degree temperature drop tomorrow. So y'all must be sending what y'all have in my direction. The only person that sounds like she's safe from all that is Bet Vernon or Bet 
<laughs> and she's I, she's gloating. Bet is gloating. Yeah, she okay. is. Robin, you're going to talk one of the cornerstones. All of these are cornerstones that we're talking about uh, in in the podcast here today. You know, Jan's talked about boundaries, and and Bet's talked about respecting the business and and just how you view it, and and your time management and your weekly plan sheet. Money is, 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 is your baby. And Robin, for my viewers, Robin will be on with another episode where she'll do an entire episode with us on just money management, whether you run an in-home business or not, we'll focus it on in-home business. So Robin, have you always been a good money manager? No, in fact, I was just getting ready to say money has not always been my baby. Um, <clears throat> I think that probably I'm, I made it a goal to become really good financially because I was so poor at it when I started my own business. In fact, I had a very close friend who mentored me through the process because when I actually quit my full-time job to start my home-based business, I did not even balance a checkbook. And I kept, I had two different checking accounts, one for personal, one for business. And I kept more money in both of them just so that I would never have a check bounce. That was my idea of money management. Wow. Well, you've yeah. come a long way, baby. But I have come a long way. There's no doubt about it. But, so, I mean, Robin, Robin, there are millions of people. And I would say a huge percentage of the people even listening, their money management is let me go to my, let me pull up my app on my bank to see if I have any money and how much I have. Absolutely. And that's not, that, that's, that's, that's a terrible. Yeah. Disaster. Well, the thing that, that for me, the thing that really that speaks to is what it does to how you feel about yourself. Yeah. And I think that all of us have run good businesses because we have created through running a business and creating the business, we have created self-respect which led to creating self-confidence. But if you are miss, you can do all those things that Bet and Kathy and Jan talked about, but if you're mismanaging your money, which I saw my dad do, you know, I, I watched that played out right in front of me before he, while he was an electrical contractor, he had a restaurant. And when a bill came due and somebody came into the restaurant to, be paid, I would watch him go to the cash register and just take money out of it to pay the guy. He didn't get a receipt. He didn't keep up with anything. And of course it was a disaster. So I watched all of that and I watched people that really didn't manage their money correctly. So I started out with that mindset, but just because you see that doesn't mean you have to live that. Well, and thank you for saying that because, you know, Pam talked about in the health issue that, you know, only a small percentage of your health is actually DNA. And absolutely. And the same with same is true with money. I mean, just because you have parents who saved money doesn't mean you inherit the tendency to save money or just because you have parents that spend everything they got their hands on doesn't mean you inherit that. No. Um, it, it's like you say, I mean, it's the age old word choices. I mean, we all make choices, but I do believe that how you manage your money, if you have a home-based business, or even if you don't have a home-based business, um, you know, can lead to either a really great future or a very poor future. And we all know if you haven't read, it is true that the biggest cause of marriage problems is money. And so money is a big hot topic, no matter whether it's a business or whether it's just in your in your everyday personal life. And I think, you know, today in today's world, people are not so much interested in having a lot of things as much as they want to live a life that's debt free and that gives them the freedom to be able to because that is freedom is living debt free. And, and that's what you can have with the home based business. So. Um, now put together about 10 different tips that, you know, we can talk more in detail about at a later time, but I just thought I would hit 10 things really quickly um, just for people listening to just kind of get an overview of how you really should look at running a good business from a good money perspective. The first one is that <clears throat> I think you should avoid relying on credit cards to fund your business. 
Um, <clears throat> Thirty-eight percent of startup business owners actually raise money from friends and family. But if you do have to borrow money to open your you open your business, do your best to get a simple interest loan rather than putting or getting a credit card and charging a bunch on it where the interest is compounding. The second thing I would suggest is that you pay on the loan every single week, even if it's just a small amount, because you will pay your loan off much faster, just like you do your mortgage of your home, if you pay on it several times a month, instead of paying on it just when the payment is due. The third money tip is, um, I think the quickest way to get on a profit basis is for you to increase your income and decrease your expenses. And Kathy said the same thing when she talked at the very beginning. Um, the fourth tip is that a tax deduction is not necessarily a reason to spend money that will take away from your bottom line profit. It amazes me how many people I hear say, but this is a tax deduction. I used to always ask myself this question. Um, is it really smart for me to spend a dollar to save 30 cents? No, it isn't. Not when you're trying to make a profit. The fifth money tip is to create a budget for your business expenses. If your business expenses vary from month to month, determine what your average monthly expense is gonna be and leave that amount in your business account every single month. Even if you come to the end of a month and you haven't used it all, leave it there because the next month your expenses will be higher. The sixth tip I would suggest is that you keep your business funds and your personal funds, as well as your credit cards, totally separate from each other, never commingle money. That's about the worst thing you can do. But it's something that probably all of us have been guilty at at some point. I know I did in the beginning. Number seven, bookkeeping software, I think is absolutely a critical component of money management for a home-based business. Bookkeeping leads to better business decisions regarding finances, taxes, and profit. And there are a lot of good bookkeeping pieces of software out there. Number eight, pay the price for an expert CPA, one who is familiar with the home-based business. I mean, you get what you pay for. And, you know, I would never suggest you go down to the corner tax people that get 24 hours worth of tax help before they start working on your taxes. A lot of them will tell you that you can't make any money if you're working a home-based business, which we all know is not true. But we probably have all had somebody tell us that at some point in time. So just make sure that you get somebody who is really good with home-based business taxes and trust that person. And you will pay that person a good portion of money to be able to have them, but they will save you money in the long run. And number nine, talking about taxes, it is critical that you keep up with your taxes. Um, I've seen a lot of people get in trouble with tax problems from not paying. And when we talk again, we can go into more detail about this. Actually, I pay quarterly and most people who have a home-based business probably really need to do that. And then last but not least, discipline yourself to save a little every single week for yourself. You know, I took myself from a scarcity mentality to an abundant mentality with money by just saving a little bit. I started out by saving $5 a week from my profit. And because when I started, I had no savings. I had not one dime in the bank. When you have no money, you spend every dime you have. But when you start a savings, you become very protective of that savings. At least I did. And I, I saved and saved and saved until I began to really grow it to a huge amount. And then I took that and paid a huge portion of that down on my mortgage. And in three years, paid my mortgage off totally. One of the best pieces of advice I can give in closing is that when you are financially free, that is the biggest gift you give to yourself because you can work from your heart and not from your financial need. 
which wow. I think which I think impacts how you deal with people, whether you're in sales or whether you're in plumbing, it doesn't matter what you're in. Your money impacts everything about your life and your business. Well, my audience can't see the other people on the screen right now, but they're all nodding. Every point that you made, because we've lived it, we've made the mistakes, we've watched people yes. make the mistakes, we were amening everything that you said, and I cannot wait to have you back on my show where we can dive deep into those 10 things. Um, because we all have a million stories about what you just said, and we know that to be true. And those are simple things that just start with discipline. Robin, thank you. Thank, thank you for, for being having me. And, and what a blessing you are to all of us. Thank you, Linda. <laughs> all right. Well, we're going we're gonna to wrap things up today with someone that you got to meet last month when she talked about a healthy body. And uh, she is from Bowling Green, Kentucky, and she has 35 years of running her own show, All right, running a successful business from her home. Both of her parents were educators, yet they had multiple other jobs, bookkeeping, church organist, choir director. Her mom wrote college curriculums, and they served in many ministries. Her father even started a florist. So it's a nice mixture of traditional and entrepreneurial background, and she hails from Bowling Green, Kentucky today. Well, Welcome back to my show, Pam. Hello, my friend. Thank you for having me back. How are you? You know what? At your your first episode was a huge hit. We're still getting so many positive comments and people making positive changes in their life. But today we're going to talk about something different, and that is the role of time management. Jan said, you know, attitude management, money management, time management, those are things that guarantee a business to fail, but it also the reverse is true. So yep. walk us through a little bit about time management for an in-home business. Absolutely. Well, first of all, I'm just so blessed by our brilliant friends <laughs> and feel so, I mean, I'm sitting here taking notes like a, like I'm just starting out, but I'm just so grateful for the wisdom that is available. And, you know, I think time is one of those topics that a lot of people talk about, but really it's a personal a decision to master. So here's what I want to say about time today, Linda, for the, for your viewers, your schedule has one purpose results desired. That's the only reason a schedule exists. So if you start with, I got to do this, 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 but you don't think about the end game, then you can find yourself just going in circles all day, every day, feeling behind, feeling unproductive. Um, and so start with uh, the truth. Your schedule has one purpose, and that is results desired. So if what you do day in and day out doesn't produce who you want to become and what you say you want to experience in life, your relationships, learning, earning, contribution, creation, invention, business growth, recognition, travel, influence. If, if all that's not happening in alignment with your dreams and desires, then you're likely doing what you do out of habit or what you've observed through your family versus out of design. So um, an overriding time management principle is you get to design your life and the way you structure your time has everything to do with the results you get. And based on season of life, single, newlywed, nursing mom, multiple school age children, um, older adult children, you pivot your schedule to live your priorities. But changing my schedule never meant compromising either my family or my goal. Um, kind of what Jan was saying, you have to look outside of the box, outside of what has been your norm for a year or two or longer in order to grasp, I can have it all, but you know, maybe now it's time that th that season of life has changed a little bit. It's time for me to pivot. So how do I restructure my time to accomplish all of that? So I'm going to, you know, come back with an umbrella statement, decide who you want to become and live like her, right? Everything else gets delegated or dumped. When you own your own business and you work from home, you have $1 jobs. For example, folding the laundry is a $1 job, or you have thousand dollar jobs, or you have million dollar jobs. So our schedules have to be signed around first to be, and then to do. But the caveat is in order to be, I got to do. Most people are underproductive, underfocused, easily distracted. 
Um, and so a good starting point is to do a time study. At the beginning of every podcast, you say we have 168 hours in a week. So I would challenge your viewers right this minute to take a, do a sincere, honest, not a, not a goal time study, but last week's time study where your time currently goes. Just like Robin's talking about, if you don't know where your money goes, then you don't have any money. If you don't know where your time goes, you don't have any time. So you'll quickly see when you do a time study of the 168 hours that there are other questions relevant to, I just don't have enough time because you do have enough time. So what yes did you give to someone when you meant to say no? Because no is a complete sentence and it does not require an apology or an explanation. A lot of people struggle with that one, but that's going to be a key to running a successful home-based business. Because when you say yes to this, I'm saying no to this. So my yes and my no have to have credibility and they have to have a good foundation. You know why I'm saying yes or no. So continue the time study by looking at your current habits, right? Things that I do in a day or a week or a month things that I do at work, make a list of all the things that I do and only I do, things that I do for work, things that I do for home, um, errands that I run, the taxi service that I provide, um, both in your side hustle, your job, your business, make a list of all the things that you do, work and home, and then make another list, things that I delegate for work, things I delegate for home. I love Kathy talking about the family who cleans her car and the guy who cleans her windows twice a year. Uh, Kathy, your windows are are cleaner than mine. <laughs> but um, things that you delegate at work, things you delegate from home, and errands that you delegate, um, both for your business and home. And then go back and look at all of that that you do. Don't get tired yet because you got another thing you got to do. Things that I could delegate. Because we can all go through this exercise and still be unwilling to make necessary effective changes. So we got to dig deeper. How badly do I want what I say that I want? If that goal to grow your business still ranks high, there are typically a few common obstacles to better time management. Most of these words start with a C. We're cheap. We don't want to hire somebody to wash the car because we think we should wash the car. We're not clear. We don't have a clear outcome, an end game of exactly what we want in terms of earning or travel or lifestyle or family. We hold low commitment. We're only, we're only with it until we get an ice storm or a snowstorm or something happens in our family. So commitment is low. We have a limiting belief in ourselves or in our uh, home, home business. Or we have a compromised attention span, distraction, news, Pandemic, TV, entertainment, social media scrolling, viewing other people's perceived dream life while putting ours on hold. Um, the reality is simple. Today's hard work, the thing I do today without procrastinating, without putting it off. Um, today's hard work, the impossible task, was yesterday's easy task of one of six things, most important things that I ne needed to do. So all of life is impacted by the process of accumulation. No one day makes or break you, you know, one where you're totally productive and no one day where you totally lose it all makes you. It's the process of accumulation. So learning how to be a good steward of your time and looking at all that you're doing and being honest about it, adding in TV hours, adding in nap hours, adding in scrolling hours, really looking at it. Because if you can take that uh, a chunk of time, if you can find nine extra hours a week, 12 extra hours a week, it's like Kathy was saying, you can start an entire new business. So I have one blanket piece of advice and then six small quick considerations. Um, the one blanket piece of advice is, once you set your schedule, recognize that in a couple of years, based on age of kids or parents, you may need to tweak it a little bit. Okay, that's just the blanket. I think most people don't ever set a schedule because they like they know they're gonna have to change it once summer comes around well yeah change it you're in charge of it you get to change it okay so here are the six quick small things number one eliminate an all or nothing mindset in the back of every 90-day planner is a section for projects or events that need time strategy implementation they need creativity so what one to three main elements need designing right now are they systems for education or for a different purpose um, are they systems for recognition are they systems for communication are they events 
um, schedule times to touch that in priority, but put it in another place so that you can schedule into your week. I'm going to work on today my recognition system. So the, in the back of every 90 day planner that exists for you to unfold in detail. Um, and so really number one is all about eliminate an all or nothing. I can't do it all. And then about the time I get it fixed, I have to change it again. So eliminate the all or nothing and then just take on one thing. Uh, number two is uh, a lead uh, from that. What impacts my business the most today? What would impact my business the most today? So prioritize. Many businesses have a few plates spinning in the air and I've identified about six for my own journey. So consider all those and then consider the impact of new elements. You know, um, we did not have to deal for all of the three decades or four decades that we've had a home-based business with social media posts. So I want to put a voice to that. Social media posts, how do they directly and indirectly impact your business success? If it's just a to-do list or it's just fun or it's the current thing to do, this needs serious evaluation and serious decision making because social media, I want to clarify, your impact is not the number of likes you have. It will unlikely put money in your bank account for long term or elevate the growth of your business. And so all the things you do, what impacts accelerated, what would increase your business the most, do more of that. And then consider how vision impacts your business. Am I taking people on a journey they'll otherwise not experience? How do I keep that vision alive no matter what? In your business, do you have customers, a sales force? Do you have leaders? Do you have employees? Do you have staff? Because I'm not a one dimension leader who thinks it's my way or the highway. I know there are many ways to accomplish a desired outcome. I am, however, a fan of results. Not justification that what I'm going to do, it's eventually going to produce results. Hey, sister, if you don't get results this week from what you're doing, you can keep doing that thing and believe in it, but you got to get something that gets results right now. So prioritize and get results. Number three, what are the main categories you need to give time to your business? List each category from networking to educating to recognizing to events to physical to virtual special promotions. Once you make this list, ask, is it clear? Is it tight? Is it repeated? Is it executed well? Do I love it? Would others respond? Do I need to tweak it or make any of it better? What's good? What's lacking? On a scale of one to 10, how well am I doing each of these things? Why am I putting this under time? Because you may need to revamp or tweak or pivot with just a few things, but you can't do it all right now. So which one of these would uh, increase and take me closer to my spoken and written goals? Do I need to revamp how I touch these things? Do I need to delegate more? When will I reprioritize? How will I reprioritize? And then remain accountable. Who will I remain accountable to? Number four, who do I want to be? I think it's important to really write it down. Who do I want to be? What are the adjectives that describe the person you want to become? Continually define and refine its clarity and then eliminate every other thing, every task, every effort, that is not in alignment with becoming her. Decide who I want to be and then live like her and eliminate any conversation, any task, any relationship that doesn't fit who she really is, that doesn't set goals like her, that doesn't speak words like her, create a work ethic like her, develop habits like her, eat like her, build a schedule like her, become that girl who knows what she wants and goes after it without apology or compromise. In fact, get somebody in your mind. Would Linda Tupin be doing this right now, right? Just ask yourself, say, saying to this, this to the person, would she be scrolling? Would she be procrastinating? Because every choice is an opportunity to grow closer to the outcome that you want with your time management, because the way you're investing your time is the person that you're becoming. And then lastly, real quickly, consider your current schedule. Are you in flow or are you all, are you all over the place? So for me to train my focus, I used to take um, each day of the week, with a priority. On Mondays, I would plan my sales meeting education event. On Tuesdays, I would follow up from that, workers and guests. On Wednesdays, I would be out. On Thursdays, I would do a new checklist for progress and Thursday evenings education for my uh, new people. And then Fridays for growth and networking or personal selection. And then two times a month on Saturday, special events for growth. Weekly at the end of the week, I have practiced this forever. I would, I would look and take what I call the space between seven days and evaluate. Did I give my best to the time that I had this week? Was I a good steward at the time that God has given me? Where did I waste time? What am I 
proud of? What did I learn from a failure? Um, how do I set it up for next week? Go back, look at my goals. Do I still want these goals? Is this still important to me? Um, did, I, did I live like it this week? How can I live more like these goals are important to me this very next week? And in that space between seven days, reevaluate and then go another hard week at it. And lastly, number six, frame your day and frame your night. By that, I mean the first two hours of your working day and the last hour of your night. Frame your day. Have really solid habits in your day with your time that are non-negotiable. I wake up like clockwork and I go to bed. <laughs> I go to bed early and like clockwork. And well, then you know, we, we, we've been joking amongst ourselves that you're turning into Kathy because, you know, Kathy's the one that goes to bed with the kids <laughs> and you are quickly becoming Kathy. I am. And I'm so proud of that, Kathy. Thank you for being my mentor. <laughs> You know, there is nothing like the value of good sleep and waking up rested. And so, you know, not everybody has to do it my way. In fact, I saw a cute little uh, reel today. Those two young girls and they were like, you know, opposites and they had, uh, you know, morning or evening and they were debating over which was the best time of day. I, I it doesn't matter, right? You just got to find your best everything. But framing that day and then designing tomorrow, tonight, so that I don't wake up in the morning like, what am I supposed to do? What's the most important? Because you, then you're running on emotion. So design tomorrow, tonight, half hour at a time, and then stick it. So, you know, all these things fall within the time that we have. And so for me, time management, it's all about my personal and business growth game plan. So do the hours of my day reflect the intention in my spoken life and the direction of my home and my work life? And is it? the desired results. Is it bringing the desired results? bringing results. That's the only reason it exists, right? <laughs> to get a result. <laughs> uh, um, well, you know, uh, for so many years when I was new and didn't know what I was doing, I would say the affirmation, does this bring me joy or does this make me money? Okay. I might not have known the desired result, but I did know the desired results. It's like, I want to need to make money. Okay. Yeah. And I think that's why people are looking at in-home business in the great resignation. It's like, okay, I want to make money. And, yeah. uh, you know, I was so thankful for people like you and other leaders that taught me only, um, the only thing that cannot be delegated in your home is relationships. Right. Yeah. The only thing that cannot be related. So yeah. thank you, my friend, Pam Shaw, 90 day planner there behind you. We talked about it in the health uh, in the health episode, yep. but they can get that at PamelaShaw.pink. They can. Thank you, Linda. PamelaShaw.pink for your 90 day planner. And you know what? When Pam gets tired of coming on my podcast, <laughs> she'll tell me, but we'll probably have Pam back here in the next month to elaborate on all of that. Well, let's bring everybody back on the screen one last time, because uh, I'm sure we'll need to have a picture where we're all sm smiling beautifully. And, you know, we're used to posing for pictures. That's what we have done most of our life. And so we know how to stop in the middle of a sentence and smile. So uh, as we're getting ready to do that, we're all going to shout out to Mike Rowe that Linda Tupin <laughs> is his soulmate and the desired results that Pam talked about. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, it's like, you know, I, I went straight from one career to this career. It's like, I know what my desired result is. <laughs> Linda, it's going to happen. He's going to call and we are going to be so excited. We're all coming to Lexington as soon as it happens. Yes, <laughs> yes we are. Well, I also know what kind of test you all put a man through because we watched <laughs> you do it with Kathy's husband, Pete. That's right. With Beth's husband. Yes, that's true. He better Pay pass. Back. Yes. Well, uh, you've built him up a whole lot, so he must be all that in a bag of chips. Well, he is. He is that in a bag of chips. So, anyway, thank you, my friends. Uh, you've given uh, over an hour and a half of your life now. Uh, to, out of that, you know, 168 hours, you gave it to the world today, but you gave it to me, and I appreciate that with with every fiber of my being and my life is so much richer because of each and every one of you. So thank you all. We'll start the music. We'll end this podcast and I'm sure you'll see all these folks in the future. All right. Bye-bye everybody. Bye, Linda. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye.